Matt Lenehan for Boxing Social, association with William Hill Empire Fight Sword Delights. We're joined by Beefy, Liam Smith. Liam, you here with your fighter today, Frankie Stringer. I just spoke to him. Confident lad, looking forward to a, another another big stage. You've guided him quite well so far. He's had a bit of exposure. How did you two meet and how's this sort of relationship come about? Yeah, no, I've knew him, I've knew him all his life, you know, I knew I know his brothers and his dad, uh, my dad and that knew his family, so yeah, boxed in the same amateur gym for years since he was a kid and I've just I can say I've knew, I've knew him ever since, you know, he's probably ten years of age, nine years of age. But he's a good kid, obviously he's getting good exposure now on these big shows. Starting to speak a little bit better, obviously that'll, that'll come with time, yeah. the interviews. Um, but, you know, obviously coming into his own now, starting to get his man strength on the field, we'll see the best of him now, he's doing six rounders. He's also as well, something that a lot of fighters when they're young, especially back in the day, didn't realise is his social media now is, I suppose it's very important. He's got his own videographer with him, following him around. Um, how important is that, that people, you know, get to see him the most and get that exposure? Yeah, of course. Look, the way the, the way the world's gone now, the power of social media, your YouTubers, Jake Paul, and that. Like, I feel like you've got to do that now, and you know, it's good that he's learning. He's got to do it early, try and build a fan base, try and build a social media profile early doors. So, he, um, you know, he know he knows what, what what's to come, and he's young enough to to, to to build it from now on, get on these big shows. So, how far do you think he can go? Obviously, you don't want to sort of say too much because it's early days isn't it it's going into his fifth fight on Saturday but obviously you've seen him you know better than most how far do you think yeah obviously I think he can go right all the way ability wise boxing ability wise boxing brain he's got everything once he gets his man strength starts building his power starts doing the rounds you know the world is used to I think as long as he does everything right you know outside and inside the gym everyone else will pave the pathway for him then it's down to himself to deliver obviously you know the people around him can can do all he want but at the end of the day he gets to the ring and fight so if he does his best in that way I'm sure he can go a long way. Now you've, you've achieved a lot in the sport, you've ticked the box of world champion, you've had huge fights, Canelo Alvarez, more recently Chris Eubank Jr. Is it is this good for you that you're able to sort of do this and give back in this way? To, maybe you maybe not, you had all your brothers around you but for other people they have to really start from the bottom but you're able to give someone an opportunity. Yeah of course obviously, I, I, you know I've said that to him really, I've tried to explain that to Frankie you know this is his fifth fight. He's had, he's been on Paul Butler world title fight. He's going to be on Lawrence O'Coley world title fight. He was on me and Kishi Bank Jr. He was on me and Liverpool. He's, he's had five fights and been on top of the inner shows. So like, you know, you're in a lucky position, and that's not. I don't mean me in general. I just mean, you know, any, I, any yeah, of course. I, I, I've got a good relationship with Frank. I've got a good relationship with Eddie. I've got a good relationship with Boxer. So, you know, I haven't been to any bridges and. You know, obviously, I feel once I'm done, I can, I can even do an even better job than I'm doing for him now, and I can put me, you know, 100% into yeah. into managing him. So, uh, look, I, I'll pave the right path for him. He's if he's good enough, he'll do it. You know, if, he, if, if, if he's not, then he's not. Right, talk to us about you. Last we heard, well, last I saw you, yeah, you put on a devastating performance. Uh, apparently, Chris Eubank Jr. has activated his rematch. We also then see Eddie Hearn on top of saying we want Chris to fight Conor Ben. Are you in like are you in sort of limbo here going? Can someone just fucking tell me what we're doing yeah. so we can crack on? Yeah, I am. Yeah, obviously I'm. Um, I'm told the rematch is going to be done, and I'm told the rematch is getting done. Then I'm then I'm here and he's fighting Conor Ben. And I look, I'll just see what it's, what, what's what. But I'll probably have a better answer for you by Monday because it's getting finalised. And I, if, if, if it's not done by Monday, Tuesday, I'm, I'm going to move on and yeah. and concentrate on me and when I want to fight next. Although that is a big money fight for you, the rematch, there was almost that feeling, I think, from a lot of people, um, not putting words in anyone's mouth, that it didn't maybe warrant one because of how one-sided the fight was, although it's a big money spinner for you. So if it isn't Chris Eubank Jr., there's always been talks of Billy Joe Saunders, and you two seem to, when you put things out on socials, there's no beef, it's more like, let's talk business. Yeah. What, what, what's the crack? Where do you move from there? Janabek, Saunders, what, what, do you, what, do you, what do you want to do? Anyone, you know, they're all big names. Um, Janabek's a world title, Billy Joe's a huge name. Yeah, me and Billy Joe respect each other. You know, it was business. It was a good reaction when that got put out. Yeah. But we'll have to see if that comes into fruition. You know, I don't think Billy Joe's ready till September, yeah. which will be a bit of a stumbling block for me because I want to fight June, May, yeah. May June. And um, but you know, I look at them big names and we'll see. How important is it for you activity? Because you went through a stage of you know you wanted the big fights and you eventually got one with Chris. You've had the performance, but it's important to now capitalise in it and not just sit about. You need to get out. Yeah, I'm 34 years of age. I'm not sitting on the sidelines saying. You know, people are seeing the best of me now because I've been very active for two years, yes. and um, I've, it's always I've begged for my whole career. So, um, I, you know, I want to carry that on until until I'm done.
Do you feel for the rest of your career that you need to become world champion again, or is it about biggest fights, most money? Obviously, it's about money. Well, but, 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 but for you, does it? Do you have to be world champion again, or is it like I've ticked the box? If it comes, it comes. That yeah, that is true. I want to become world champion again. I want to have that legacy of being a two-time world champion. You know, no, 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 yeah. no scouts or uh, whatever. But it's got to be a fight that's either a big fight, a big money on the line that gets fear in me belly, or a world title that gets fear like that gets me excited because. At 34, it's hard for me to get. I've been I've been professional 15 years. It's hard for me to get fear. You know, I'm, I'm basically fearless. You know, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I don't get nerves no more. Cause, but you know, I've, bigger fights. So. I've been on the biggest stage. I've been in the biggest scenarios. Um, so I, for me, at 34 years of age, to get myself into fighting shape, I need that fear or that. That you know that carry. What fighters do tick that box? Obviously, you mentioned the Sonners. It's a big fight, and I suppose you get that. That maybe that nervous energy because it's that big an occasion, but a Triple G, something like that. All of them, like I say, you know, Triple G, Billy Joe, Bluch, Golovkin, um, just a, a, any of any of all them names, you know, Eubank again, anyone. Brooks in training camp now as well, and I know everyone's sort of having a feel out for the Conor Ben fight, but you you think you and Kel could do a deal? Kel obviously worked with boxer for the Khan fight. Seems to be on good terms with Ben. Obviously, you're definitely on good terms with Ben. So, is that that's a, that's a big fight as well? Yeah, it is. Obviously, it'll always be a big fight. Me and Brooke, it's always being linked and mentioned. So, that you know, that that can possibly be made. And it's all again. I'm in a good position. I've always said I'm in a good position. Once I beat Chris, I beat Chris. I'm still in a good position now, but it just needs to be finalised now. I saw the day after you played football, yeah. a bit of a penalty miss. Yeah. What? What went on there? You've, you've done that though. You play football in the build up to your fights. I find that staggering. You could get a leg break or anything happen in the build up. Is that just part of you though? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I've always done it. You know, I, I, I played after it'd be Chris, I played after Russia, I played after Farlow with stitches in my eye. I love football and I'll always do the same. Um, yeah, it was well documented. I missed a penalty and I scored one the week later. Yeah, uh, that went on Sky that one, yeah, wasn't exactly. it? Exactly, <laughs> that, that's a big point now. Everyone thinks I'm a crab because I missed on, <laughs> on Sky, but um, you know, I'm very good on penalties to be brutally honest with you. And, I haven't missed one, and then I missed one. It was live on Sky, and but uh, you know, I put it right since. Just touching back on the Chris fight, I remember speaking to you in the week, and you looked at me dead eye and goes, "Look, don't be fooled. He can be hurt." You were adamant. Everyone gave you the chance of winning the fight. Not many expected that to happen, though. So after the fight, how much worry it, that release of, "Look at me now. I told, I told you so," because it was a big "I told you so" to everyone. It, was, it definitely was, and I wish everybody, every, you know, every, every media station here now pulls up the interviews my fight week, and I said, "You do not think Chris can't be hurt." And I got laughed at as if like, hey like, mate, you can't hit in the head. Okay, you might be able to the body. Yeah. And I said, don't be surprised, don't be, don't be, don't think he can't be from nails. And yeah. you know, we did. And I, again, that was very good for me to ram it down people's throat. That don't ever think fights with good chins can't be hit. Yeah. You know, and don't forget before I fought Canelo Alvarez, I was that air of invin- I had that air of invincibility about me. Yeah. Never being budged. Yeah. Canelo dropped me. Sooner or later, mate, you, you, I can just say, yeah. every good chin gets cracked and. There's been people with better chins than Chris over the years who get who get stopped and dropped and you know it was just it was good that I could do that too. Well hopefully you can get a big fight made and um, one fell through last night at Usyk uh, Fury. Disappointing for boxing I have to say. Um, we need to sort this out don't we? We've got Garcia and Javonte but we need to see these undisputed fights don't we? Yeah we do mate yeah I still think it's going to happen I'm not going to lie but... On a different oh, date? Yeah no, I don't know to be honest you know I still think yeah I, yeah, I still do yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Announced on AJ Fight Week? Maybe, yeah. But I still think it's going to be announced. All right, Liam, appreciate your time. Good luck for you and your fighter on Saturday, and we'll catch up soon. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you.